Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, third and final installment of uh, Digs in Europe, part three. Uh, in this installment, um, I'm going to show you records that I picked up largely in France. I mean, I didn't pick up that many records in France, but um, and then others that I picked up either in Portugal or in Germany, but in my Portugal video, I, f I chose to focus on like Portuguese and Brazilian and African records mostly. So it had a theme and in my German video, I focused on German records and the records that are left here, are you know, they're, they're not either Portuguese nor, nor German records, but they're just a mix of everything from jazz to post-punk to you know modern classical and everything in between you know the drill that's that's what i do on this channel it's uh it's always a a great big uh, mishmash of uh, of styles it's um uh, it's a sand clash um a bit of a housekeep housekeeping i just hate that that phrase but um because i've taken up a brand new job um start of this year in february um it, it's very it's it's very demanding um and i don't know that i'll be able to make videos on as much a regular basis as i as i normally would i'll try to make one a week if i can but uh, it's just uh, and you know it's just a lot to do um you know and the commute is very long it's not close from home it's, it's kind of the other side of town so um yeah so you know in that sense i just want to say if you if you watch this channel i, I still intend to make videos but um I, I don't know how many videos i can make or for the matter watch and um it's because also i'm, I'm spending less time here listening to records as well i'm i spend more time in commute with my headphones on and you know that sort of thing anyway <laughs> all this to say that you know i'll uh i'll i'll still be active but you know maybe in a lesser kind of way for a while i'll start with uh france because obviously um that's where i come from and you know i spent quite a bit of time in france um for christmas um i went to paris for a couple of days i didn't really do any digging in paris um because we just arrived and I wasn't really in the mood. Um, it was more like, you know, walking in Paris, going to see some exhibition exhibitions. We, we went to see the, the giant uh, Mark Rothko uh, retrospective in um, the Fondation Louis Vuitton. Mind-blowing exhibition, really. I mean, if you like uh, Rothko as much as I do. Caught up with uh, a good friend Jack, uh, who's a watcher, and, uh, you know, we, we exchange records quite often um no really great little time in paris but no digging uh and after portugal i went back to my hometown for christmas and i really didn't pick up that many records my mom absolutely absolutely wanted to give me something meaningful for christmas and she knows i love music and records and she doesn't know what to buy so she gave me this voucher for a uh, big music shop called FNAC. Uh, they're everywhere in France. It's kind of one-stop shop for culture. It's got books and records and video games. And but I went to FNAC, uh, my local one, and um, I was looking through, and I sort of blind bought two two albums with the the voucher that I got given. The first one was this album, uh, Abel Silaco, uh, Where Is Home. Um, so he's a South African uh, classically trained cellist, as you can see, and he mixes the um, African, South African traditions. There's a lot of chanting, there's a lot of, um, you know, tr traditional folk song mixed with uh, classical music. Uh, for example, he, he plays the uh, cello suite number three by Bach. And so it gives a, a really interesting mix of of ideas and it's very fluid but i would say i haven't spent enough time with this record yet um but it was a complete blind buy i just i didn't listen to it online beforehand or anything i just went oh this looks cool i'll just take this 
And I also blind bought this beautiful record, uh, Coquina Cano, Oceanic Feeling. Uh, it's on no format, and I pretty much blind buy just, just about anything on no format. It's a French label from Paris, and they specialize in modern classical ambience, a lot of, a lot of African, really good modern African music comes out on no format. I could even do a Gimme 10 on no formats, really seriously, because there, there's so many fantastic records. The, the Balakesi Soko records with Vincent Segal, for example, they, they're all, they're amazing, amazing records. The uh, Gonzalez records, that, it's so many. And this this is no exception. This guy, I think, is Japanese or of Japanese origin and lives in Paris. Um, and it's a mix between modern classical ambience, it's very meditative, very, um, you know, um, dreamlike, you know, just like the cover. It's a beautiful piano playing, if you like, um, you know, Niels Fram and that sort of school of, you know, music, music you, you'd like that. And then I, I, um, I, I went to in my hometown where I come from Montbéliard there's one record store music box which I um, I already featured on a digging video like a couple of years ago maybe even last year or whenever I might put a link to and I didn't take any footage this time because I couldn't be bothered it was raining heavily the day I went and I was you know I was just trying to stay warm <laughs> and I went into the shop um, and I must say, uh, normally I find really killer stuff on the walls. You know, the last time I went, I found some Sunra originals and some Kraftwerk or, um, originals for really cheap prices. Because it's a small town, a lot of this stuff is not known by the locals. You know, it's kind of, it just could totally is, you know, it's in plain sight, but nobody really buys this stuff. And uh, there was nothing really on the walls that I, that grabbed my attention. So I went through the store and I d dug through every bin possible, imaginable. Um, and in the bins, um, I didn't really find anything of that I really truly wanted. And there was a, a bin right at the bottom under the uh, psych section. And it was so dark and obscure, you could hardly see it. So I went on my knees and I started digging and I thought maybe there's something interesting in there. So I just thought I'd just take a punt. There were no prices. It was a Euro bin basically. And the first record that I came across that I thought, wow, that's that's an interesting record is this Isabelle Mayero record. So she's not a household name in France, singer songwriter, and she's super interesting. I mean, if you were to get into, you know, alternative sing singer songwriters from the the 70s and 80s she would be top of the pile we have a mix of like kind of fusion new wave chanson it's kind of art rock in in parts it's like you know it's like a, a chanson record backed by steely dan and um, a little bit of um the like weather report you know joe zawino would be there playing a little bit of like light keys um it's funky and it's got this kind of balleric kind of feel you know like trancey deep um like some of those tunes are very sort of yacht rockish in in some ways but not i'm not saying this in any offensive manner i love her, her albums her first album is killer as well um you know it's just super chill kind of you know french chanson you know so I'd recommend this if you could find it, the mot étrange. And then so I kept digging in his box and lo and behold, this pops up for a euro. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that this is not like a, a you know, a brag or anything. It that, you know, still has the sticker of the shop that it came from. And this is the name of the town I come from, Montbéliard. Um, and it's a first German press and it's pristine. It's absolutely pristine. The, the disc is pretty much unplayed. Um, so if you know this record, I mean, obviously, uh, this is Black Christ of the Andes by Mary Lou Williams, American jazz pianist, uh, one of, you know, the key figures of, um, of 
early um, avant-garde uh, jazz. Um, I mean, and this record is a mix of gospel, jazz. There's a there's a bluesy influence that runs through the record. I mean, I was stoked to find this. So, I mean, it's a well-known record in the in the VC at least. I think that people would know would have heard of of this record. If you haven't, you know, you can go and listen to it. And still in the bargain bin, I really, I mean, I tend to not buy classical music when I travel because there's so much of, of it in the bins here. You know, you just go, what's the point? You know, you know, I, I can I can buy classical music all day here and still not, but I couldn't resist this one. Olivier Messiaen, Quatuor pour la fin du temps. So uh, it's a Quatuor for the end of time. And it's just a great version of, of that masterpiece, really. I mean, it's one of the great masterpieces of modern uh, classical music. For me, Messiaen is one of the heavyweights. He's not super well known, I think, but, and this is a nice pressing on Harmonia Mundi. Um, with, uh, I mean, these are the, well, these are the players. There you go. Uh, you can read that yourself, but it, this was a Euro as well, and I'm like, yeah, I'm taking this home. Um, Messiaen is a French composer. He uh, he pushed the limits of uh, avant-garde classical. Uh, I, I suggest that you listen to this piece here, or the Turangalila Symphony, which is really like the apex of his catalogue. And then, because um, I was... You know what it's like when you find records that are really, really, you know, they're really valuable and you just go, oh, is he going to bust me at the count, at the, at the till? So I, I, I went back through the shop and, I, and I, there's a crate that I kind of missed. And uh, there was this inside, a record that I've been looking for for quite a while. I, I love Kip Anrahan. So Kip Anrahan, if you don't know, is a, a New York musician refuses latin and new wave and post-punk very unique mix of, uh, of music on this he has uh jack bruce steve swallow uh, arthur lindsay playing uh, scott marcus uh, david Rod Rod rodriguez a lot of really you know great players and it is a record it's called desire uh, develops an, an edge it's from 1983 on American Clave, which is his label, really. And Kip, uh, I, I really love his, all of his stuff. I've got quite a few of his records now. Um, and if you've never heard of him, it, it really is like this kind of like Latin meets post-punk. It's just straight. I mean, but it, it's, it reflect, reflect the, uh, the Tigeist in New York at the time where, you know, you had all these sort of clashes of sounds, you know. Talking heads on one side and Blondie and and you know Grandmaster Flash and you know Tito um, you know Ray Barreto you know you've got these kinds of you know uh, disparate and in in very sort of you know, esoteric kind of influences that sort of clashed into one another and made you know incredible music. Now I'll do a little segue into because I'm I'm talking about Kip. I, I picked this up in Porto, in Portugal, for very cheap. It's, it's only 10 euros, it's still there. It's another uh, Kip and Rahan record, which, um, uh, there we go. This one is called, uh, this one is called uh, Days and Nights of Blue Luck Inverted. Right. There we go. Uh, and it's like, it's like sixth or fifth of sixth record. And... I really, really love this record. It's again, it's a, it's, it's, it goes more into a jazz direction. Uh, it still has a, a, a little bit of a Latin edge, but you can see that jazz and jazz fusion were very much the, the set, uh, front and center of his. That's uh, from 1987, also an American clave, and it is an absolutely killer record. Uh, again, with Steve, Steve Swallow on bass, you've got. Uh, who plays on this? You've got a whole David Murray on tenor sax. Uh, you do have a lot of uh, Latin players as well, but uh, again, kind of a similar roster to Desire develops an edge. Okay, since I'm talking about Portugal, a couple more records that I picked up in Portugal. 
at the record fair that I went to in Lisbon. Um, I, I, you know, this was super cheap and I just couldn't resist it. Uh, this is one of my all time favorite singles. The Gospel Comes to New Guinea uh, by 23 Skidoo, the uh, UK post punk band. And it's backed by Ku, so two of the greatest songs. So 23 Skidoo fall squarely into the sort of punk funk um, with a little bit of a goth industrial kind of uh, tinge. Uh, it's a band that isn't, isn't talked about very often. This tune though is basically an extended, it's like can really. I mean, like if you ever listen to, to this, if you take the time out, it's like, I don't know, it goes for about 10 minutes. It's about 10 minutes long, this track. And it's just drumming. It's just like, but it's a masterclass in drumming. And it's really, there's tension that builds, goes down and goes back up. You've got these crescendos and you've got these kind of like industrial kind of sounds that overlap and overlay on. It's very sort of like, it's transfixing. When I listen to this tune, it's one of my favorite songs ever, the gospel. Uh, and that, it was only like about seven euros for this this single. And it's in, the sleeve has seen better days, but it's in great condition. So um, uh, the gospel comes to New Guinea. Uh, it's a must. And in Coimbra, uh, I was given this by the, by the, the guy behind the counter because I thought it was an interesting record. Uh, Michelle Rosewoman and uh, Quintessence Contrast High. So it's a record on Enja, Enya, Enja, however it's pronounced. This is uh, Michelle Rosewoman. It's uh, it's a, an avant-garde jazz record, which is really nice. It's not, I would say, it's mind blowing in any way, but I got it for free, which is great. Uh, and it, it, it's a mix of instrumental jazz and vocal jazz as well. You've got alto and soprano sax, flute, uh, bass, drums, uh, piano, vocals, and synth, and bongos. So you have a mix of a very potent sort of, yeah, um, avant-garde jazz, free jazz, and also a, a little bit of um, you know, post-bop kind of feel to this. It's a very nice record, 1989 on Enja. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk to you about records that I picked up in Germany, um, which are non-German records. Now, whilst I was in Berlin, I picked up a couple of records in uh, Altercat. One of them, it was a Brazilian record that I showed the other time. The other one was this one, um, Inspiration, uh, and uh, by uh, Ara Tokaltien, Enrique Villegas, and Guillermo uh, Borda Rampe. So uh, these are their names. I mean, you know, um, there you go. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you can read the hype. Like Top notch spiritual jazz album from Argentina will leave fans of Ferry Sanders and John Coltrane astonished. I don't know. Frankly, if I'm going to be totally honest with Inspiracion, it is inspired. Sure. Is it Ferry Sanders level or John Coltrane level? Absolutely not. 100% not. It's a nice record. Yes. But it kind of, I think for me personally, it kind of like disappears into the background, this record. It doesn't hold enough of my attention. I mean, I need to play it more. I've played it about four or five times, but sort of, it sort, sort of fades into the background. Um, uh, 1975. I'm not saying this to be offensive. I mean, you know, Opinions about music should be consistent, you know, like I'm not going to say, oh, you know, everything is so wonderful. Um, and um, in, in Dresden, uh, in, in Germany, I was finally able to pick up my favorite record of 2023, which I only had on a digital uh, download. So what happens is that I only really buy records in Australia when I'm here. That's my sort of way of dealing with, like I, I try to, to stay local. And this record 
was never distributed here. I mean, you know, it's just a small release. And I thought if I go to Europe and I find it in the wild, I'll buy it. And lo and behold, uh, there was one copy left in a shop in Dresden. And I had a nice talk, talk with the guy behind the camera about the record. And the record is uh, Paul Saint-Hilaire, uh, Ticking Volume 1. So you may not have heard of this record or seen this record. So this is, for me, the best release of 2023. Uh, it is a mix between ambience, electronics, dubs, ind industrial sounds as well. But it's more, more like a dub reggae kind of affair. Uh, Paul Santelier lives in Berlin. And therefore, like, finding this record in Germany was probably a safe bet. Um, this just killer grooves. It's got a kind of a. It has. It does have a little bit of a dubstep, grimy kind of vibe to it. Um, just, just listen to the opening track, uh, "Bedroom in My Bag," or even uh, "Keep Safe" or "The Weatherman," and you'll get a good idea of what we're talking about. It's, it's kind of grimy electronic reggae. Uh, freaking love this record. And um, also in Dresden, picked up this cheap, cheap heat. Uh, Sri Anthony Das uh, on Tabla in Budapest, uh, with uh, accompanied by uh, Zlot uh, Zlatan Coxis. So, so you get all these these players. So it's a an Hindustani record recorded in Budapest uh, between these uh, Hungarian players and. Um, I think Sri Anthony Das is Indian, uh, so um, it's a great drumming session, um, and I, it just it was just really cheap, five euros or so, and I couldn't leave it there. Uh, I, I played I played it on the turntable there in the store. I thought this is, this is freaking cool. And lastly, in Germany, um, in Germany, uh, this artist here, she's like a she's. You can find her records everywhere in Germany. She obviously was very popular in the 80s there. Very, very popular. I've seen shops in Germany where they've got entire sections with just her name, like the section. And I thought, well, you know, I I was one of the records I was most looking for in the past couple of years is this record here. This is a masterpiece as well. So we talk about Anne Clark. So she's a... Uh, UK synth wave, minimal wave um, artist. Okay, um, uh, that's the she falls squarely into that sort of. So this is Anne Clark, and this record is really really great. This this album here, it's the first half is a collaboration with um, uh, David Harrow, and the second half you can see here, and the second half. All the songs are composed with Vinnie Riley of the Duruti Column. And the second half is, I mean, both both halves of the record are very, very interesting. But the second half is really like a Duruti Column record with her vocals. And her vocals are fantastic. It, she's she's a great singer. Uh, it's very, very um, well crafted. It's very memorable as an album. I don't know if you've ever come across this, but I was hoping to find a copy in Germany and I did. And I also did find a copy of this wonderful uh, EP, which is which was released around the same time as this one. So this one is from 1980, uh, I think 88 or 86 or 88. And this one is about 80, I don't know. Don't quote me on it. This is uh, joined up writing and it's just as good, but it's kind of a, a a condensed version it's an EP it's got six songs um, Weltschmerz is superb really Killing Time is excellent you know uh, Our Darkness the last track is, is magnificent so it's, it's a minimal wave of the highest order and I will finish off with a record that I picked up in Bangkok because I thought you know um, you know I mean I was in Bangkok for about two or three days and I think we probably spend next Christmas in Thailand because we, we had a great time in, in Bangkok and thought it's worth just spending more time there. So when I go back, I'll, I'll try to go to, there are a few record shops in Bangkok. 
Um, but basically, there was this is one record that I wanted for quite a while. And when I'm in quite a while, it's probably, you know, I've been thinking about getting this record for about, I'd say at least five years. And it was released only once on wax on, on record and then uh, re reissued on CD m many times. It came out in 1990 on ECM. And it's just a record that you just don't see that often. Anyway, long story short, on Discogs, I saw that there's there was someone in Bangkok with a copy for sale for a, an okay price. So I contacted this person and I said, hey, you know, I'm coming to Bangkok on the, you know, the 8th and 9th and 10th of, of January. Could I pick this up from you directly? You know, I'll pay you, I'll give you money. We we skip the Discogs fees and all that, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, it was a bit of talk back and forth. And in the end, we made it work. And he was a super nice guy. Anyway, long story, sto long story short, one of my most wanted records um, is this Kenny Wheeler, uh, Music uh, for Large and Small Ensembles. Now, this is a real masterpiece of a, a big band, experimental big band record. You can see the players. Uh, What's that? So you got Kenny Wheeler, obviously, John Abercrombie, John Taylor, Dave Holland, Norman Winston, uh, Henry Lother, Derek Watkins, uh, Paul, Rutherford, for, Paul Rutherford. You've got a lot of Evan Parker. So it is absolutely phenomenal, modern, classical, experimental, big band kind of combo. It's a double record. Came out in 1990 on ECM, only once on record. And it's pristine, it's in pristine condition. And, um, you know, I'm just really, you know, I'm just really grateful I was able to pick it up, you know. Um, so there you go. Uh, that was my, the rest of my Euro finds. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I was not blabbing around too, you know, too much. And, uh, you know, interact with me, talk to me, leave me some comments, share the love. Take care.